Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I am Amira, Minister of Justice and Witness for Clackamas United Church of Christ. I am here with Barack. Barack is the program director for the Peacekeeper Society. Hello, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, yeah, we met a couple of weeks ago. Y'all gave us a bunch of hand sanitizer and boxes of food for our turkey and ham giveaway. Um, I still have like 70 boxes in my garage of hand sanitizer. <laughs> Excellent. It was awesome. But um, can you just explain a little bit about who you are and how you got involved in, in this? Yeah. Um, so my name, yeah, my name is Barack. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I'm an Egyptian American. My mom is from Skunderia, Alexandria, Egypt. And my dad is from here. And uh, I grew up in Portland. And so for me, mutual aid was just like always a part of my life. Like when I was a kid, my mom was really, you know, Arab communities take care of each other. So she was always bringing folks food. She would bring like bread and cakes and meat and veggies to like the workers at the post office by our house, to the plaid pantry, just like people who she would interact with on a daily basis, who she figured, you know, like, do y'all need some help? Do y'all need anything? Um, and so that was always instilled on me at an early age. Like, oh, you just, if someone needs something, you give it to them, you know? Mm -hmm even if sometimes that might be like a sacrifice but um someone's in need you help them and so that was just like part of my life and then um when i got a little older um yeah my mom was always volunteering at the food bank in southwest portland where there's like a large um east african and muslim population so she got to like help translate for people and kind of get more culturally specific foods going. And I would go there and just, you know, help unload trucks and stuff and got an idea of like how it can work on sort of a larger scale. Um, then I left Portland for many years, um, was lived in three different continents. Um, wow. Came back um, in about 2016. And so that was like right when Trump was elected and um, I'd been living in Palestine before that. And when I came back, I just, I had been a little discouraged from the Portland activist scene before that, um, like when I left, just because like all, you know, uh, small communities and like all communities that are, you know, experiencing a lot of trauma, um, there were issues that I had. And so when I came back, I definitely was like, I'm going to be a little more behind the scenes. Like I don't need to be doing anything publicly I can just like you know like be serving the communities around me um checking in with the houseless neighbors that I have and seeing how I can support them um and so that was kind of like where I was at for years I would you know do support for undocumented communities when it was needed for like folks I'd worked with in restaurants who needed support who were undocumented but it was mm -hmm. always kind of a small scale mutual aid thing you know like I'd collect money in from my own circle mm -hmm. uh, my own community and then use that to bring supplies to whoever needs it. Mm -hmm. um, so when COVID hit, there was obviously a huge need for just community assistance and like meeting people's basic needs. And I started doing grocery deliveries just through like the COVID-19 mutual aid support group on Facebook. And then we started organizing mutual aid in our own circles, trying to take care of the undocumented folks who we knew weren't getting unemployment. Mm -hmm. And um, so we had already been kind of doing that. And then when um, George Floyd was murdered by police, um, there was this whole new need for mutual aid because there was an uprising happening in Portland and all over the world and country. And all of those folks needed support. They needed water. They needed to have their eyes washed out after they were tear gassed and maced. And they needed medical attention after they were beaten by police. Um, so all those types of things became a new need for mutual aid. And that's uh, when I was volunteering a lot with Don't Shoot Portland. And mm -hmm. we were just trying to essentially like get the, especially the youth activists, exactly what they needed to protect themselves uh, when they were going out every night, like helmets and first aid kits and goggles and gas masks and just trying to like protect these kids who were going out and fighting um, for their own liberation every night. Mm -hmm. and so that was happening and it was pretty intense. We were, you know, trying to continue the mutual aid to the folks that we had been serving. And then also there was this whole nother need. So we're trying to like 
show up at the justice center with a bunch of sandwiches and water bottles and just, you know, make sure that people have been out there for 13 hours, have some calories. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we had been, don't shoot Portland. And I had been wanting to work with the warm Springs community because we knew that um, they hadn't had water for months. And so we didn't want to just show up there um, as non. Can you explain what the warm Springs community is? Yeah. Warm Springs is a confederated, um, group of tribes in Oregon. They're traditionally Columbia River um, people, and they were displaced and ethnically cleansed out of their land and sent to Eastern Oregon, um, like on the other side of Mount Hood, sort of by Madras. And that's where their reservation is. It's, um, yeah, like they're, they're fishermen, they're river folks. So like, they were taken away from all of that. They were taken away from the water that was sacred to them and put in a place that's really, really inhospitable. It's really hard to grow anything. And then on top of that, they never gave them proper um, services like water. So there was a temporary water system put in that just kept failing. And about a year ago, the temporary fix they put on completely broke um, and there was no water for anyone in the community. So they were completely relying on bottled water for everything. There was like um, a semi truck with two, you know, like portable showers set up for the entire reservation. Four showers for 3000 people. At that time, COVID on the reservation, on the Warm Springs reservation was drastically higher than anywhere in the state. It was really, really bad. Um, And so there were a lot of people experiencing COVID who were having to shelter in place in tents in their yard without water because they were trying to protect their families. It was hot, it was the middle of summer. They were sitting out in the yard without, in a tent for sometimes weeks at a time trying to recover um, without water. So at that time we connected with a Warm Springs tribal member and started to just bring truckloads of water there. And from there, yeah, I got very deeply involved in a mutual aid group called Fires Getting the Spirit and kind of helped get it off the ground. And we were doing deliveries Uh, This summer, we ended up working with a lot of different reservations, and I think we went to 13 or 14 different ones. We were in Yakima and Puyallup in um, the Nimipu Reservation in Lapway with the Nez Perce. We were in, uh, we've gone as far, we went as far as Pine Ridge, South Dakota, a couple of times to work with the Oglala Sioux people and bring them supplies that they were needing. Um, That's amazing. So that was how I kind of got introduced to the peacekeepers because they were a Yakima based nonprofit who had been doing this work for a long time. And so we had brought, we had the group I was with at the time had bought them a trailer and brought some supplies up and they were like, Oh, we'd love to have you at one of our distros. So we came through with like a trailer full of diapers and some volunteers and took part in a distro in Hera in on the Yakima reservation. And it was just a beautiful day. Um, you know, like we served hundreds of families. It was drive up. People would drive up, let us know what they need. We fill up their car. No one has to get out. No one's being exposed to COVID or having to like, you know, unnecessarily expose themselves to a grocery store. And from that day, we started to support those distributions. Um, and in January, I left the group fires igniting the spirit and was kind of looking for, I hadn't been actually employed for since March, I had just been putting in like 80 hour weeks, essentially volunteering, but like running Mm -hmm. organization. So it was more like community organizing for free, which is great. Um, But I was realizing that like, I need a sort of source of income. And so right around that time, the peacekeepers had contacted me and been like, hey, we would, we're, we've been really wanting to expand to like Portland and the tribal communities around Portland. And um, essentially they created this job of Portland director for me because they, they're an indigenous organization um, and I'm not an indigenous person. And so I'm like incredibly aware of that. And um, like the respect and the way I have to carry myself working with this organization and representing this organization. Um, so they had kind of, how they framed it to me was like, you have these skills we've seen, you know, we've worked with you for the past year and we think that they could really help um, help us help reach three people and offered me that job. And I was absolutely like honored and grateful and really stoked on it. Um, How long ago was that? That was in February. So recent. So I had been working with them for about a year. Um, We were were just showing up with volunteers and kind of helping um, with those distros. But I've been officially working with them like as a program director since February. 
And since then, we've been able to, we did our largest distribution ever in Tacoma, which was 200,000 pounds of food. It was like steaks and whole hams and like big things of nice peanut butter, cereal, like anything you can imagine. It was like mm -hmm. squash, three different kinds of squash. Um, and we served, I want to say, it was, I think it was 4,127 individuals served total. Wow. So that was like our biggest one by far. And since then, I've been trying to help organize more local ones. So like the one that you were at in Gladstone, um, we've got a monthly one in Hillsboro at the, in the St. Vincent de Paul parking lot that we do with an awesome food cart called yeah. Comida Kin. And they will like feed folks free breakfast and then we hook them up with supplies. And um, then we've got one twice a month at Fox Run Mobile Home Park, which is a like entirely Latino community um in deep north portland and uh right now i'm sort of talking with um don't shoot portland about how we can start working with communities in portland like um in northeast portland and north portland and like the black community here mm -hmm. and so we're looking at Ockley green middle school or king elementary school to do a distro for that community here Wow, wow. So I have a couple of questions that popped in my head as you were talking. <clears throat> so you don't have to answer them because I didn't, I didn't know Katie before. But one is friendships. So when you're doing this type of work, um, do you find it difficult to have regular chill relationships? Or do you even have regular chill relationships when you do so much activism and community service? Uh, that's funny. Like, so I'm definitely someone who like, I have like I've enjoyed myself in my life. Like I've lived in, I lived in Hawaii. I've got, I've got to have times in my life when I'm not focused on helping my community. And I'm just sort of enjoying myself, like working on a boat in Maui. Um, and then I've also, you know, been, yeah, um, done this work. And the past year, it just became really clear to me that there was like no other option than like giving it everything I had. And yeah, it like sort of became a joke that like, oh, we can't wait for the next distribution because that's when we all hang out. That's when we see each other and that's when we catch up. And it ends up being like, I would leave those distributions feeling like so full and like, I'd be like, oh, cool. Like, I guess, you know, like I don't need to go kick it with anyone this week because I'm so full from like just all the love and joy that I got there. Um, so yeah, no, it's definitely been hard. Um, it's been hard to maintain relationships and friendships and all of that. But uh, I'm finally finding a little balance, I think, since I started actually working for the peacekeepers. That's good. Yeah, I definitely relate, relate to that, which is why I asked, because it reminded me of like, gosh, you do so much. And the more I'm new to this world too, and the more that I am engulfed in it, um, the more I find like regular friendships, they're hard to have like people don't understand it's like a different world it's and it's hard so then my next question is like how do you keep up with your mental health like how do you yeah. make sure you're good and just I, I just want to say one more thing on the friendship was that yeah. like also yeah like um it's hard to be like to maintain a friendship with someone who doesn't share the same values as you and that doesn't mean that I need to be that every single one of my friends needs to be like out in the streets getting tear gassed or showing up with supply or any of that but it just means that if they're not like actively fighting for everyone's liberation then i don't want to fuck with them at all like and i have lost a lot of friends um you know just I, and i've also had a lot of friends like you know come to me and ask questions and not get defensive and be like okay here's ways i could work on anti-racism and then you have the ones who don't want to hear it and they take it as a personal attack on their character when you're saying you live in a system that gives you immense privilege. Um, so that's that's difficult, but it's one of those things where it's like there's no point in, you know, investing time and energy in people who wouldn't fight for your liberation. Um, and mm. then mental health, geez. I feel like you asked me this the other day when we were talking on the phone and I was like, uh, I do yoga. Um, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely, I'm definitely working on uh, figuring out ways to maintain my mental health. Um, I stretch and, you know, like try and take care of myself and mm, you do all seem these really therapy. Upbeat. 
Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I definitely could do a better job of self-care. I'm a lot better at taking care of others than I am taking care of myself. That's something that like everyone always tells me. Like I'll be like dropping, doing grocery drop-offs for three days straight and then not have eggs or milk in my fridge because I like just don't go grocery shopping for myself. So I'm like, oh, it's fine. I'll just grab some food, you know? Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah. yeah, I love it. Um, what is, oh, I wanted to talk about getting involved because a lot of people feel even like anti-racism work in general, it, any of the, the realm of the stuff that we all do, um, people think that it's so far-fetched, like they can't do it. So how, how, how would you tell, how would you describe to people how you can get involved in mutual aid? So the main thing is, I think a lot of people have a misconception that you need to ask permission to help another person. And that's just like totally false. That's like a colonial concept that was introduced to us to further our oppression, not further our liberation. So people think that you need like nonprofit status, you need 501c3 status to help someone in need, that you need permission from the government to help someone in need. Or the craziest concept is when people think that the government are the only people who can help because they've so clearly proven that they have no intention of doing that. Um, so for me, it's just about asking, it's about mutual aid, it's about mutual respect, it's about mutual reciprocity, it's about building those community ties and like walking, you know, like you see an individual in need, you see a group of people in need, you ask them if they need help. You know, if it's a houseless guy who looks cold, you ask him if, you know, do you need a few bucks? um to get a warm drink do you need do you want me to get you some food um if it's you know a community of people that you're seeing um especially if you have a connection to that community like for instance the fox Rome run mobile home park there was just one person in that community who had seen that we were doing a distro they asked about some food boxes they got uh i think 10 food boxes delivered just to their house one day and then sort of started to bring those to the neighbors. They asked us if they could get more. Now we're handing out, you know, three pallets, uh, 300 food boxes, 7,400 pounds of food in this one mobile home park, simply because we built the relationship. We asked them what they needed. They told us what they needed. We didn't say, oh, you need that. Well, we're actually gonna give you this because it's healthier or it's because this is what you actually need. This is what will really improve your life because that's not what we're here to do. We're here to give people what they want and not to paternalize, um, which is a huge issue with nonprofits. It's like the paternalization of marginalized communities. Wow, that's a whole nother topic that I'm interested now <laughs> in hearing more about. So what's, what's coming up next for you um, and your organization? Well, um, we have got some distributions coming up. This Sunday, we've actually got like a big sort of volunteer appreciation day. And um, a lot of our volunteers are youth um, on the Yakima reservation. And so it's kind of a day just to have some fun. We're gonna be teaching like traditional, um, like traditional ways, like how to start a fire without um, a lighter or matches, just with flint, how to can salmon. There's gonna be tie dyeing, bead making, um, just to kind of day to community build. And now that everyone is vaccinated in the Peacekeeper Society, we can sort of get together in that way and share space. And then uh, the 26th, we've got a distribution in Hillsboro. Um, it's in collaboration with Our Streets PDX, which is a local Portland um, organization that helps feed a lot of people. They're a black organization and they're awesome. Um, We've got another distro at Fox Run Mobile Home Park, and then we're hoping to set one up um, in the first week of May at either Ockley Green Middle School or King Elementary in Northeast Portland. Awesome, cool. So how could how could a, a church or a company or even just an individual help help you? What what is some what are some real tangible ways folks can help? Money is always a huge thing. Um, like just for one of these distributions that we put together and we're, especially if it's on a different reservation, depending on how far it is, like we've, you know, gone as far as Lapway, Idaho. And we are totally volunteer powered, but putting up 50 volunteers in a hotel, 
uh, the logistics of getting, even though most of our food is donations, just getting multiple semi trucks, people mm -hmm. to drive those trucks, pallet operators, those types of things, um, it adds up and we end up spending about 15K per distribution. So really the, big, the biggest thing people can do to support our work is donate, which they can do at Venmo, um, is just Peacekeeper Society. And our cash app is also just Peacekeeper Society. Um, and then we've also got a, um, I think it's called Fundly. And you can find all that if you go to our Instagram, either Peacekeeper Society or Peacekeeper Society underscore PDX. And you can see, find in our link tree, kind of our website, all of our different social medias and um, different ways to donate. And then the other way that people can help is volunteering their time because um, we always need help and we're always working in different communities and looking for folks with different skills. Um, who can help us, you know, whether it's, I'm really good at operating a pallet jack or I speak Spanish so I can, you know, help when we're in Hillsborough or in Fox Run or things like that, or just wanting to show up. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be with us or with any other mutual aid group in town. It's just about like showing up to help. And like right now, there's a defense of uh, Laurelhurst Park going on where there's a camp, um, a houseless camp that's being threatened for a sweep. So there's just been community members showing up, cooking for the folks who live there and protecting them from the police. That's one way to show up. You can, you know, you can just start organizing in your own community. Um, even if it's, you know, organizing in your own community and then you bring all the supplies to another mutual aid group who actually is, has the uh, resources to distribute it. But it's just about like finding whatever way, thinking about yourself, what skills you have um, and you've acquired throughout your life and like, how can I use those skills to better my whole community? Yep. Because mutual aid isn't always like, here's a banana. It can be like, I know how to do taxes. Let me help you with your taxes. It can be like, I have successfully registered 10 businesses. So I will help you register your business in a way that is and efficient. It can be sharing skills, resources, space it can be letting someone crash on your couch um all of those things are mutual aid mutual aids as old as human beings since we you know shared the fire to keep warm that's awesome it's amazing and once you it's it's like we're talking about once you get into this lifestyle like i don't want to hang out with people who don't care about other people <laughs> and it's like it's really not that hard. It feels good to be around these type of people that want to help other people. It's really freaking amazing. Um, okay, last question. What is your superpower? Connecting people. I feel like I, um, I just have mad love for everybody. And I feel like I can sort of, I don't know. I feel like I've always been good at meeting different folks and being like, whoa, if you two, you know, got, or like, if you shared this resource with this person and kind of like helping make those connections and yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time. I look forward to connecting with you to see how we could partner um, at the church. And yeah. then I would love to be a part and help volunteer somehow. Right on. I love y'all's work and I'm, yeah, I'm super looking forward to seeing how we can collaborate and, you know, serve some folks together. For sure. Thanks. Appreciate it. Have Appreciate a good one. You. Have a lovely day, Amira. Thanks.